Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Cinnabon and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at a weather machine. This is a new game from Eagle Griffin Games designed by Vital Acerna. It plays from one to four players in 90 to 150 minutes. Yes, it's here. It's here. Weather machine. The new big heavy design from Vital Acerna. We're usually a fan of those yeah. uh, and this was one that I didn't think we would be able to play before the end of the year, before all of the lists to get a review out, because I didn't know when it was arriving. And then suddenly one day, somebody knocked on my door, I opened up and they gave me a package. I didn't know what it was. I opened it up and it's like, um, and it was glowing and it was like singing songs to me and I was happy. And then we play the game now. That's how the process goes. Yes. First to get it, I get happy. Reading rules, play the game. Talk about it on the channel. If you enjoy stuff like that and you're new to the channel, maybe you haven't even subscribed yet. What could you do? You could subscribe yes. with the button down there. That will make us very happy. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about the weather machine. This might be the most whimsical theme from Mr. Lacerda, yeah. who's always like big on, on Euro themes. We're not heavy into theme, but I like the theme in this one nonetheless. In this game, there's a professor, I feel like, like a crazy professor guy, called Latif. And he has made a machine that can stop bad weather, like uh, tornadoes and tsunamis. Yeah, extreme and all, weather. Uh, yeah. Extreme weather, that's the thing. Yes. Not bad weather, bad. Like really bad weather. Extreme like weather, he can stop that. But there's a, a little drawback to his little machine, the weather machine. Every time he runs it, somewhere else in the world that weather appears instead. So it's kind of like a butterfly effect. You take it off somewhere and it comes somewhere else. So now he has gone to the government and said, I know I can fix this. I just had to build a new machine. And the government is like, okay, we will pay you to do that. And that's where we come in. We're going to try to build up the weather machine, fix the weather. The government is going to give us subsidies. They're also going to try to fix the weather a bit by themselves by building small machines themselves. And we're going to try to build prototypes and, and, and basically fix the sweater to get victory points and maybe even the Nobel Prize to fix extreme weather forever. Yay! That's only the theme. I thought yeah. I was done with the overview, yeah, but that, no, that's the theme. That's the theme. This is a kind of like the many other games from Lacerda. It's a worker placement slash movement game with only one worker mm. and very few action spaces but still your brain is going to explode. So on your turn you're going to take your little scientist and you're going to move the scientist to one of the other actions where you're not at. So you cannot do the same action two times in a row. Sometimes you really would have liked to be able to do that but you can't. You're going to take him, uh, take your scientist and you're going to place it at a, another one of the actions and depending on where you place you might get some bonuses. You, there's no money in the game but you get these vouchers which is thematically the government giving you things so you can use in other, other departments. So you go somewhere you're going to get some of these vouchers and if other people are there you might get more stuff. If Latif is there you might get even more stuff uh, and then you'll be able to do one or two actions uh, in three of the locations and the last location you will then be able able to do many small actions basically supply action getting stuff into yeah. your engine and the things you will do is that you will go to the government action to get subsidies from the government uh, and, and and help them basically build you selling a machine part is what it says what it's saying in the rules you're selling a machine part so they can build up their machine you will go to R&D to do uh, you will first go to the or not first but you can also go to the laboratory to help run these little uh, weather machines and also publish what you found out what you research about these different weathers and then you can also go to R&D where you can use what you published and go in and build prototypes but you can also then send robots there to work for you so that the prototypes are easier to make and when you build these prototypes then you're gonna have breakthroughs in these weathers and find out more about all of these weathers going on all around the world. And that is basically the simple little thing you will be doing in this game and it's all for points. Because all for points, points is what makes the world go round and the person with the most points after the game ends. There's not a, there's not like an infinite amount of turns but the game is we're going to be between 11 and 14 turns if I or rounds, if I'm not correctly mistaken. So that means that you're going to be doing around 11 and 14 things in the game. Yeah. And that is kind of the, the overview. overview and the theme and everything. So now this was a how to play. You can go and play it now or you 
could watch Paul's video, yes, which is please. a better thing to do. Yes, do that. The game looks amazing. Um, we are a fan of Iron Tools yeah. artwork, and he has done such a great job on all the Lacerda games. Um, but this one also looks fantastic, in yeah. my opinion. Uh, it is a um, very detailed board, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make it uh, overwhelming for me. I think, think it's very easy to see the different symbols. I think that Inotool is great at making the iconography yeah. uh, understandable, but also it doesn't take away from the beautiful board. It nope. looks beautiful, but also understandable. I think it's like so good. Like Ian is making things that are both, like he's both a great artist and yeah. then a fantastic graphic designer. Yes. So he makes these games just work. Yes. Like in some games we play are like art over function, and here you get the art and you get the function. Like yeah. this might be the busiest looking board from uh, of the uh, big Lasorda sort of games. Yeah. Maybe the first edition of Kanban, but that wasn't the end it did, uh, because that was just a mess of symbols and colors. But this is so colorful. Like we are huge fan of Lisboa, which is mostly blue. This is very colorful and feels like the adds to the whimsical theme, theme and then you have the small robots and you have all of that. It's, it's, it's very nice. One thing, like the robots are all silk printed on one side, yeah. which means, and Latif and as assistants and all of those things, which means that if you play this game and, and, and like Latif is too big to lay him down, so all the robots we lay them down, so also I who sit on the wrong side of the table can also see them because other, all the other things don't look so cool. But that's just like a minor thing. And then a minor, 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 yes. minor gripe, 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 gripe. Grape, a minor grape. Gripe. It's so small. <laughs> it's so small. It's almost a reason. Uh, but but the minor thing is that um, it's kind of like the first time you play in the machine, there's going to be all the different machine parts going to have colors on them, but you don't use them there. So there's like the other places where you use them, you see that, that as well. But here you, you're actually only using the chemicals. So it's kind of like it can be, um, if you just look at it and don't look at the action, it can be like, oh, do I need the yeah. machine parts here, the cogs? Oh no, I don't need that. I need this here. And that when you when you play a game this complicated, you're gonna be like your main mind is gonna be okay. I'm gonna do this, 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 and that. No, I needed that there. And I'm yeah. like, no, I actually need. I have this. I needed that. Um, and that can be a, a small little thing. Yeah, I agree. I think that it looks nice for a decoration, but I wish that it was something else than the actual symbol that yeah. you use in the game because it's a, it was a little confusing the first time mm -hmm. I saw it, but you get used to it. Um, but um, the, the whimsical artwork really fits the theme very yeah. well, I think, and I like the little Latif uh, meeple or what it's called. Yeah. It's really cute. Love it all. It also has a rule book, nice. which these games have. Uh, this is only, this is not a solo rule book. This solo rule book was uh, by itself. It's 23 pages long. It's a big one, but it has loads and loads of pictures. Like, let's see if you can see this. Like, you, you maybe not see that all text, but you see these are two pages and it's actually not that much text. The first time I flipped through this, I was thinking this looks like it might be less rules. It's been a while since I read the other rule books, but it's like, oh, but this all is very well laid out. It's made by Paul Gogan from Gaming Rules. So you know we're gonna get a well laid out yeah. rule book. Um, and everything makes a lot of sense. Like I also did watch the video because yes, these- me too. Um, and actually like we had three players and all of us watched the video uh, because you usually fall asleep while like, yes. playing these kind of big, big That's games. That's a problem during less early games. <laughs> and it's, it's a problem. At all games, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I really, I felt when I read it that it was not that much, and I, I and and also when you start playing a game, like all the actions really make sense. Mm. It the, the hard thing to do is to to make it all work together, yes. and I'll talk more about that later. Yeah, but like the rules. I mean, if you're used to playing a lot of games, it's going to be a horrible rule book to get through. It's going to feel extremely complicated, but it's not the most complicated looking game or rule book I have ever played. Yeah. Or, and or game, read and yeah. explained. And the game comes with play raids, uh, and, and there are multiple pages, as in other Lasorda games as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a neat book to have in handy, especially for some of the scoring tiles that you can get. It's oh, really yeah. nice. And this is like where you see that this is a simple game. The play rate is only eight pages long and not nine pages like it is in Lisboa. <laughs> but this is just a simple little game. But yes. please, like, this is over the top, of course. But I'd rather have this. Like, basically what I'm doing in this, when you, when you hear this, you're gonna be like, oh, eight pages, that's too much. But you, you don't use it. No. You, you use it like, oh, what does this tile do again? Flip it up in instead, instead of, of sending that, yeah. this around. 
and I just love the way they've done that here and in Lisboa for all the symbols and all of that. So Eagle Griffin is like, if we were to make a like best player aid of the year, this would be it, because to be honest, it would be almost like five games who did play raids this year, yeah. so it wouldn't be hard to win, but this would win probably if all the games had a play raid. We have played this game with two and three players. Mm -hmm. uh, two players took us about two and a half hours, yeah. and three players, that was our first game, and uh, that took us about three hours. And like the two player times can be quicker. Yes. If you don't play with AP players, uh, ah. it can go a lot quicker. quicker. Uh, but I'm guessing, like, like, I'm guessing, like in all of these games, like in the beginning, I feel like, oh, this is going super smooth, and then it comes yeah. to the point where, like, oh, and it's going to yes. a halt because there's so much that has there's to work. There's so much stuff. And I feel like, but I didn't feel like any of those times was a problem. No, no. Like I, I can play this three hours all day. Like it's no worries at all. Like the game is fun, and you always have stuff to think about, even though like somebody else is doing something. You, you have your turn and you have like a couple of ideas and depending on what they do, you might change that up, but you mm. have, th th so it doesn't feel like there's a lot of downtime. Maybe like it felt like a bit like that in two players, but that's just basically your AP when uh -huh. you spend like 10 minutes thinking about your turn yes. and then taking it all back and doing it again. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, but the game also has gameplay. It has. It's crazy. And yeah. as I, you, like, like I said, um, it has that like worker movement, mm. which you also have in the gallerist, and you kind of have it in Vinyos. Mm. And in uh, Kanban as well. And in Kanban you have it as yeah. well. So what interests me in all of those three games, and, and this one, is that Lacerda manages to make very few actions, very simple, like you just, like he would say, this game is simple. You just take your worker, yeah. place him in another place, yeah, and do, do that action. action. Super simple. Yeah, so yeah. so that is a, one of the most interesting things for me about the design, is how extremely complicated and interconnected and hard to make work his games are, even though they're like simple. Yeah, I, I like the worker placement in this game as well. I, mm. I love his way of making this super interesting. Yeah. I love the way that uh, Latif moves around so that he changes up kind of the possibilities on yeah. each action space, but also the other players do that. So depending on what the, uh, where the other players are uh, is placed, you might change up the way that you want to play, mm -hmm. but also um, you get some kind of like bonuses when you're placing your worker that also will dictate, okay, I need to go there first because mm -hmm. I need these vouchers so that I can then go here later. Mm -hmm. I think that is super interesting. Yeah, I, I, I feel like this system, like, and, and uh, one thing that's very interesting is the turn order. Yeah. Because, like, it, it, it's probably going to be more easy to see that the more you're playing, but it's not always best to be first. It no. depends really what the other players are doing. Yes. Because, like, when we play the two-player game, one or two-player games, I had like a moment where we both were at the supply action yes. where there's always going to be like an off room and I was like oh this is the perfect time I was second then half of the game and I was like oh but you want to go to this location very few times and this is kind of the perfect time for me to switch to being first because that meant I have all the opportunities to like yeah. take the space I wanted next time yes. and, and it was just like it's very interesting that it wasn't really a bad thing to be lost, but then it was like super good to be first. And you can also like do some kind of brass mini things where you do like a being lost and then going first and doing yeah. like a double turn. Um, so, so, so like this works here very well. Like the mechanisms is going, going to be, uh, you're going to, uh, um, uh, you're going to uh, know it. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. You're um, gonna know it. You're Natural. Gonna know uh, that. I don't know. You're gonna know it. That's yes. like the. I don't find a word, but you're gonna know it from the other games. Yeah. Recognize it. Recognize that's the word. it. Yes. I think that supply action is interesting because you don't want to go there mm -hmm. because you you're spending vouchers to get these resources. Yeah. So you're not like um, animation to get points or like accomplishing big things. It, mm -hmm. it, it feels like just like oh I need this now. I can't mm -hmm. really do anything, so I have to go to the supply action. But sometimes it's really good to be like, oh, but you, you're you're actually standing where I want to go now. And mm -hmm. um, if, if uh, I'm first in the next round too, I can't go there. So maybe I should go to the supply action and make myself lost player. Is that a way to say it? Yes. 
I feel one of the things that this game boils down to is resource management. Mm. Because you have so many different resources and so many limits to when you get them and how many you can have of them. Yeah. And like you always need to have more than you have at all times when you need them you're always going to be like oh but i don't have that and then you need to do something to get them because there's so many things you have five different vouchers you have one for each of the different actions and then a science voucher which is a free one and these have like limits to how many you can get and there's so many times in the game where i'm going to be like i'm going to go here and i'm going to get one of these vouchers but that's already on top that makes this action way worse mm. because i I don't get and I'm not getting thing yeah. in a game like this is gonna feel so horrible because but you know what that action I want to do is really good yeah but I don't get that and also if you go somewhere where Latif is and he is to the left of you on the action spots you also get a science voucher and sometimes you go somewhere oh I'm gonna get one of these and a science voucher and both are at the top oh, yeah. and you're gonna most of the time you're gonna be very happy because you're gonna get those but then that comes into like oh do i really want to go yeah. there so you have those which is a tight kind of puzzle and mm -hmm. you never have enough of what you want to do yeah. and then you have the your little workshop where you have three different kind of resources and actually there's seven kind of different resources yeah. because you have the oh there's actually more there's yeah 11 resources you have the chemicals which is five of them and you have one space where you can have whichever color you want and then you need to make with your workshop tiles two matching of a color and then you can have one of those there that's kind of hard and then on the workshop tiles you can either have a a, a bot which is kind of like one one resource that you get but when you choose a bot you will get different bonuses and different income when you do that and then you also need to have machine parts which also comes in five different colors and you also need to have space for them yeah. and you cannot use all of your resources to build like a big place so you never have enough of what you do i feel like that is kind of the big main puzzle yeah, of the game yeah. having the right resources at the right time what do you think about it? yeah i agree it's, and it's so hard and also hmm. how to utilize your actions in the most efficient way um not only the order that you do stuff in but uh, on an action you can either do like one of them or if you yeah. uh, have the uh, one special uh, space available to mm -hmm. you you can choose to do both of them and sometimes you don't have the resources or vouchers most to do of them the time you don't. most of the time you don't but it feels really satisfying mm. when you get to do it and you're trying then to like oh but I, I really don't need to do that right now I I want to spend my bot for example which is crazy hard to get mm -hmm. uh, more of in, at, at another space which is more important to me but I'm right here right now I want to I want to utilize my action to the max oh, yeah uh, both the resource management but also the way that you choose your actions depending on what's available to you is really interesting yeah and I also love like in all of these kind of games so you only have very few actions getting a bonus stuff yeah. is like as I said like doing two actions in one action is obviously better than doing it moving somewhere else going back and doing the other yeah. one if you don't have to do it in that order yes. but then you also have like at the beginning of your round you can use a subsidy tile which you get by selling machine parts to the government in the government action and that is going to get you a, either a bonus bonus or a free action and when you do that you don't get used to vouchers and you usually don't use the resources the machine part or the chemicals that you need to do the action yeah. so that's kind of it's kind of like a free action that you paid for that feels very powerful though. and it's weird yeah it feels very powerful because yeah. sometimes especially uh, when you're placing things in the weather machine that mm -hmm. we will explain uh, soon um, sometimes you have to really be tactical about your placement there because um, depending on uh, how the weather machine will run but also uh, depending on what the other players do mm -hmm. so that subsidy tile is another way to kind of do two actions in one round oh, yeah. um, and two different kind of actions so that is really powerful I think yeah I, I just I love this part of the game but as I said like it's very it feels very weird the fact that you are paying now because you are selling a machine part mm. and you're paying the vouchers to do the action and then you get that one and you can do another action but also the things you put in there is going to score your points and yes. stuff like that later mm. so it's not like you only pay for oh, that no. another thing you can get there which is in very hard in the beginning and that gets a little bit easier is the investment tokens and those you can also spend one of at the beginning of the round or do the subsidies you have to choose one of them to either slot in one of these nine scoring tiles because you get a set of nine scoring tiles 
and slot in one of them in your player board to get a little bonus or you can flip one of them to then trigger and now you're gonna get so if you didn't feel now this card game is complicated now you're gonna you go. and then you can put it in there so then you can flip it over and you will then trigger one of the three tracks because there's tracks tracks always tracks of and course. the tracks are then gonna get you bonuses and you never have enough of this and you, and you get five points for each of them uh, you yeah. can take you doing the end so it's kind of like okay i want to put the most in but also i want to flip some to yeah. get the track that i've done the most of to get those income because i need that income now so i can go to this action and i can do double action here and i can actually then get this uh, publish this paper so i can get another robot which i needed to place it there and then i get that bonus and that bonus gives me the just the amount of resource i need for the next action i yeah. want to do and it's just like all of that is just crazy let's talk a bit about like the the actions maybe yeah let's do that let's talk about the actions yes. first before the other thing yes we've talked about the supply actions yeah. that is where you get the robots and uh, the chemicals and stuff um, and the workshop tiles yes That's where workshop you build workshop. to have space for mm -hmm. things uh, i feel like the other three actions government laboratory and uh, r d feel very different yeah the government feels like the easiest action to take oh, because yeah. it's kind of the cheapest and you get a lot of like you feel like getting uh, stuff back that mm -hmm. you can use for other things the laboratory feels like uh, to me a little tactical action mm -hmm. you you kind of want to grab the opportunity when you see that it's something good for you that you can like join or yep. or be a part of and uh, the R&D feels a little more long term for me mm -hmm. so uh, in the beginning you might not be doing the double actions on especially R&D or laboratory a lot it's not possible to do it's those not in the beginning to, yeah you have to build yourself up and mm -hmm. actually get to publish some work because yep. before you can do those actions so they feel very different different yeah and also just like very short note on the supply action i think you, you said it already but that's like feels like the worst action yes. to do like you'd rather i think you said it earlier yeah. but i'd like the, the you'd rather get those things from different bonuses yes. than doing than that doing action that there's only one reason to do an action i feel like, like if you don't have to and uh, we're going to talk more about that later uh, but i agree with you like the other actions i feel like the in the R no, in the uh, government action, both of the actions you can take are viable in the beginning of yes. the game. One of them gets you the subsidy tile, so you can uh, you can trigger it whenever you want. The other one may gets you to you don't get it, so you don't get to place a robot or a machine part, which then can score your points later. You just get two vouchers, which are outlined on the outer sides of the government uh, board, and you just get to flip it and do that action. Yes. And now nobody else can do that action. But they can of course take it and then do it later uh, and the other ones like the the thing you're also doing here which is important before we explain these mm. things is that you will be gathering these resource uh, research tokens yes. which are kind of books with all the different uh, machine or, or weather, weather types, types on them and there's one color you can get from the government uh, action one you can get from the weather machine or lab laboratory action and one you get when you do one of the parts of the r d action and then when you have three of them one of each color in a row you can then publish that in the laboratory and you get a bonus and some points for that that's like one of the ways to get points and then later you can take that and do a breakthrough which i think i said is in the overview basically yeah. mm. uh, so if you saw that in the r d yeah. section mm that needs stuff to be happened first so all of this kind of all of the things we said now kind of boils down to one thing which might be the only kind of negative thing i we talked about this like what is a negative thing and there is really like there's there's it's not this is not true like it's i'm not gonna say like oh there's one strategy that's not the thing i mean but i mean like there's one thing you're trying to do you're trying to get these research tokens so that i don't think you can play a game like oh i'm not going to get any research token now mm. that's impossible because then you're not going to do any actions mm. but you're trying to get this resource token so you can publish it and then hopefully do a couple of prototypes uh, and that is kind of like what drives everything you do in the game yeah i agree i think that this is a game where you might focus on some specific points of the game mm -hmm. for example you can be like oh i want to go help the government a lot this turn i see that i can ha i have a scoring tile that benefits yeah, those scoring yeah. Uh, or i want to uh, place there and there in the r d section because my i have scoring tiles mm -hmm. that will get me points for that but in this game i feel like it's 
um, you have to do a little bit of all of the things yeah. to for it to make sense. You can't At least play our a game. Feeling is that, you can't yeah. play a game without machine parts or without robots. That yeah, um, robots impossible because you use them for, for yeah, everything. Yeah, you use them for everything. I think uh, though it's a, a fun puzzle, but I don't get that feeling of freedom that I, like I do in Lisboa, where I can it's, it's kind of choose to mm -hmm. ignore or focus very very little for example on the trading with the ships for, yeah. for example so it's not about exploration basically yeah. is what we're saying it's not like it's not true that either because you're going to explore the game and you're going to explore the different yeah. parts to go for but it's not going to feel like for example feast for odin where you can go like oh no i'm going to go whaling and that's what i'm going to do yeah i'm going to do this one thing and you that might be the game you haven't seen a sheep the whole game or you can do this thing and do that whole game here it's kind of like you have this of oh, this as the puzzle who is the best at doing that puzzle. Yeah. So it's kind of a mix of it being strategic and as I said, tactical. Mm. Like sometimes you're going to be like, oh, but you did that now. If I, I, that wasn't really my plan, but if I go in there now, that's going to give me points and also go do this, which gives me those things and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And as in all the sort of games and all of these things comes in motion and all of that happens. Let's talk a bit about the Latif and his helpers and the weather oh, machine. the weather machine, yeah. Yeah, so Latif, is the scientist that is crazy and uh, that's not like thematically it's not like going on being Wah. he's just moving slowly around the different places and whenever you go to somewhere where he is you're going to get a bonus and then it's going to move off to do your action so as i said earlier like the main the best time to go to the supply action is usually when latif is there because yeah. then you get that bonus and he starts moving and he's going to block spaces um kind of just like sandra does in in, in kanban mm -hmm. but but he's just nice He's, he's not nice. like Sandra, who's mean and tries to make you horrible, have a horrible time. No, he but is nice. He's nice. So when he moves all the way to his office uh, at the fifth space, after the round, if he's there, you're going to get income from, from the top rows of your robots. So kind of like that's a cooperative thing. Like it's going to be good for everybody, yeah. but everybody also wants it to happen because yeah. everybody needs those vouchers and yeah. those resources that you get from that. So it's one of those things that somebody's probably pretty soon going to go to the place when he is in supply. Somebody's going to, to go to supply yeah. to get him moving. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also whenever he moves, he's going to place these robots, uh, these Latif's robots into the helpers. weather machines. Yeah. Uh, and then we have the weather machine yes. itself. In the weather machine, there is a assistant. Uh, do you remember? Can you explain the weather machine? Yes, right? I can. Yes. Uh, I was trying to give the word to you, <laughs> and you were just like, I don't know what's going on. Uh, how the weather machine works uh, is that um, a different kind of weather will be like be run in the machine depending mm -hmm. on the road that the assistant of Latif is in. Yeah. And for that road to be running the weather machine, mm -hmm. uh, it has to be a corresponding weather tile on top. And it has to be full, so all of the places has to be filled with yep. either either Latif's robots or the player's robots. Mm -hmm. And that is very interesting because sometimes I can place a robot there and nobody else places it there. Yep. So then the weather machine will not run and then my robot can be like stuck there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I can choose to take him back, but that is basically resources that I have. I have uh, wasted that is not good so that is a very tactical uh, aspect of the game deciding when to take like go to weather machine and try mm -hmm. to make it run seeing uh, a little a few rounds forwards what kind of weather do you want to run yeah uh, and also deciding when to not help the other players run their machine is equally important I think it's super interesting because this is another part of the game which is kind of cooperative you in a, in a two player game it's easier to kind of run some of the small machines by yourself uh, but also you can do that not super uh, hardly in the other one in the in the multiplayer game but other players then when they see that oh it's gonna run then they want to go and yeah. go in there and get those points because as they're well. gonna run anyways yeah. and, and but also when you go into one of the bigger ones uh i can put him there and i'm gonna be that's kind of like a that's good for me, but it's going to be as good for you. I feel, I feel like it's like here. I have a bid. Do you yeah. want to? You want Do you to want join? To take my, yeah. my my proposition of us yes. running this part of the red machine. And the more you play the game, I feel like you're going to know more. Also, oh, but you have the resources for that. So maybe if I like start that, it's going to be easier for you to do the action because yeah. if you don't have the resources and you don't like, you're going to do like four steps to get in there. You're probably not going to do it. So it's kind of like 
you're looking at the other players and then of course they can be like, oh, I'm not going to do it, I have some other plans. But but usually getting the weather machine running is good, it's going to get you points, it's going to do, yeah, there's just too much yeah. stuff to talk about and, and to make it all understandable in, like, the game is way too complicated to, to explain all the nuances, all the very interesting and fun things in the game. I think, like, we, we talked a lot about the gameplay, yeah. so we go to the next section, which is... Wait. wait! And who is it or for? Wait. Oh, it's so heavy. It's so heavy. It, this, like, you know it already. Like, sort of games are on the heavier scales of... Heavy. Of, of, in the heavier scales of Euro games. Yeah. Like, there's not, like, there's Mind Clash and La Cerda, uh, Eagle Griffin making, like, the heaviest of the Euro games. And, and it's, like, it's so weird because if you, when you look at all the actions by themselves, they're very simple. Yes. Like you take the robot, you place him there, you pay the resource, you get what it says, you take the research tile, done. Mm. That's one of the and actions. They're so intertwined. Yeah, and that yeah. is like that is one of the things that I just love. Yeah. He, he manages to make these games where where it just ends up being super heavy with just all of like so many things to do, but it's it's so yes. Yeah, I made a like mistake in the first game we played uh -huh. where I had forgotten a rule and I've set myself completely perfect up for doing the thing that gave me a lot of points and then uh, I heard that no that is not allowed and I spent 20 minutes trying to make a new plan but not no nah because everything that when it doesn't work it doesn't it does, does not work so who is it for yeah is people who like heavy games yeah and people who like Lasura yeah I don't think like if you hate less sort of games, this is gonna be the one that makes you love it. I don't know why it would. I, I think don't also, know why you would hate less sort of games. In the we first know place. some people who do, <laughs> uh, but I think also this might like the person we played it with with three players had never played the less sort of game, yeah, it was his first and he time. really liked it. And I think this all it's not the heaviest, it's not the lightest one, no. but it's also not the heaviest one. So it might it, it's not gonna be a horrible first experience as a Lacerda game, but just know what you're getting into. This is on the heavier side of Euro games. If you are used to playing an hour long light to medium games, this is gonna, like, like we play these games a lot and my brain is melting while I play these games. Yeah. So absolutely. should we do some final thoughts and let everybody know if this game is fun or if it's just boring? Yes. You can begin because that's how it is. Yeah, I, I, uh... I'm always anxious when a new Lacerda game is published or we get it because I really love his games mm -hmm. and I want the new ones to shine as well. Uh, I I won't say that I'm afraid that I won't like it no. because I'm, I, I think that I usually will, but I'm always very, very happy when they exceed my expectations yep. and he's done it again. I feel like I have nothing to fault this game at. I think it's a super duper fun puzzle. Um, it's just like overall satisfying uh, and very very thinky and mm -hmm. fun and very tight but it feels very rewarding when you accomplish what you want to oh, do. Yeah. I love the um, little wacky theme in this mm -hmm. one. I think it's nice. He's very good at theme. Yes. It's nice to see him do a fun one as well. Yeah. And I just am um, overall super happy about this game. So for me it's easily a 10 out of 10. It's a canon of fun. Fun! 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 fun, 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 fun. fun. You can join the canon. Fun! 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 fun. This game is amazing. This is an easy 10 for me as well. It just gives me that feeling of joy inside where I'm just sitting like a little child waiting for my turn and being like oh I'm gonna do something fun now and all the things you do are fun like I love getting these subsidy tiles because now I know I can do that action later and be like boom and boom and boom and boom and then suddenly I'm like oh I forgot I needed that science to do this thing and now I cannot pay yeah. for that bonus oh, and the world so, crumbles yeah. and I'm gonna be like okay how can I get so out much. of this hole and there's just so many things to think about and just so much fun to be had. If you don't like this kind of games, they're going to be horrible. But for me, this is just like the, it's just so much fun. I also want to give a shout out to Paul Inkao. In sorry Paul, I'm not completely sure how I say your last name. He has been a developer for most of the Bing Last Sword of Games, if not all of them. Uh, and, and developers are people who don't get a lot of light like they don't get you don't know who they are but Paul has done a great job on all of these games uh, and we really appreciate both Vital's work and Paul's work and Paul's work 
and Ian O'Toole's work to make this a package that we just love. Yes. I cannot wait. Next year, we are doing a ranking of all the Lasorda games. Yes. And we haven't played any of the ones we still have upstairs for Keep or Kill. Yes. So we That'll probably, we fun. haven't played Lisboa, On Mars, Vinyos, Viticulture, not Viticulture, the last <laughs> one, which is called Kanban. We played that already. Galleries. We actually did play Kanban. Yes. Yeah, we did. E so, but, but, uh, Galleries is the one, not, I was like, Vinyos, Viticulture, <laughs> Dump here, all the wine so games. So close. <laughs> But yeah, this is a fantastic game, and that is the end of this long review for Weather Machine. If you are watching this part of the video and you have not subscribed, you can do it now by clicking the subscribe button. You can also click the bell button to get notifications Ding -ding. every time we post a new video. It's fun and it's free, it makes us happy, like this. If you want to do something that's not free, you can. Go to patreon.com slash boardgamingramblings and support us there. And that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Cinema. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings and bye bye.